everybody, this is Krista and welcome back to Adventures in Metaphysics. And today we bit we have a bit of a uh tarot what did I call it? Tarot chats and chores. Except this is a, a self-made chore, not really a chore. <laughs> Um, but I also really wanted to do the tag. It's an old one, so I'm very late to the train, but I have been absolutely binging the episodes of Three Fat Readers, which if you haven't watched that channel, it is a collaborative channel between Danny Mystic, Lisa Papez, and Modern Metaphysique, Dustin at Modern Metaphysique. And they are just so wonderful together. It feels like getting to just like watch a group of friends interact. With, I mean, that's exactly what you're doing. <laughs> but they're so much fun. And so one of their first videos, they made a tag and asked for video responses. And after I watched that one, I just loved the questions. So I thought I would sit here today. I'm having one of those days where I kind of just want to sit here and sort through and just flip through my decks just for fun so um especially some of the newer to me ones does anyone else do that i feel like I'm <laughs> i always sit here making such a mess because i'm constantly just sitting in front of my cabinet here where all my decks are pulling them all out and just looking through the cards but i feel like that's one way that they bring me so much joy does anyone else do that or is that just like a weird thing <laughs> anyhow so that's what I'm going to be doing, but whilst doing that, um, I thought I would answer some of those questions. So, let's get right into it. Okay. I'm going to try and not just be looking down the whole time. <laughs> um, and try not to get too distracted, because I feel like I'm going to want to talk about my cards too, since I'm looking at them. But the first one... I've been so excited about this one. Um, this is the Little Monsters Tarot. Can we focus? Oh. Isn't that so cute? Someone was selling this on Facebook Marketplace, or no, sorry, like one of the Facebook groups for like really inexpensive. Honestly, I've not, I didn't know about this deck <laughs> when I bought it, um, used from someone, and then found out after the fact that I guess it's very out of print, but it was really exciting because they really were not selling it for any sort of like out of print price, so I guess that was just a lucky thing, but I have been loving this deck, and actually you can still get the guidebook off of Amazon, so I have that too, but I've not gotten to play around with this one much. So it might have to come out next week. Anyhow, the tag. <laughs> so the first question is, what sparked your interest in tarot? So I feel like I've kind of told this story a lot. Some of these questions might be a bit repetitive, but I'm gonna answer them anyway. <laughs> so what sparked my interest in tarot um, is my friend and coworker, Rachel. And I can't tell you, I don't remember how we started talking about it, why we started talking about it. It was like a little bit pre-pandemic because, so she works um, in the library as well as the children's programming assistant. And so I got to know her better when I started working as the children's librarian and we started working together a lot. So that's how we became friends. Um, and I just don't even remember how she, she brought it up to me or why. Maybe just because it seemed like something that would interest me and obviously she was right. Um, and so from there I started just kind of listening to the podcast she recommended to me um, to learn about it. Because I really enjoy learning a lot about something I guess before I just kind of jump right in. At least at first. Um, when it comes to learning new things about tarot now, I tend to just jump in. <laughs> um, but it just, it was so, such a foreign thing to me. I had no, no, I had never heard about it before. You know, I'd vaguely heard about a tarot reader, but honestly, not really. Um, so this is late 2019, early 2020-ish, probably. Um, so I started listening to podcasts 
um, like the Wildly Tarot podcast, I, I still love, I still listen to that one a lot. They have a whole series where they go through um, card by card and share their interpretations and make it really simple. So I started listening to that, but I, I didn't have any sort of tarot deck yet. I um, would play around with some of the ones Rachel would bring to work and then just kind of listen to everything I could about it. But I didn't have a tarot deck yet. Then Q, pandemic. And as we all know, there was loads of free time to be had. So that was when I finally decided I just needed to get a tarot deck so I could start learning to actually read the cards. Because um, at that point, I probably knew a lot about the card meanings because I spent so much time learning about them without ever actually looking at a card. I, I looked at... um. I, I still have it actually. It's the Labyrinthos app. I was looking at that too. So, you know, I knew what the cards looked like um, from that because they have pictures with the meanings on there. But yeah, so I ordered, I don't know if it was Amazon or Barnes and Noble. It might've been Barnes and Noble. Um, the Cat Tarot, <laughs> which I've talked about so many times, but that was my first deck. And then very soon after, it, I mean, it might have been the same order, and I honestly can't remember it. I got the Jane Austen tarot as well, um, which that one I ended up giving to Rachel pretty quickly because it's a 52-card deck, um, which was just, it was just confusing for me to be learning off of. Uh, and in retrospect, even the cat tarot was probably a little confusing because um, it doesn't have, like, standard suits or anything like that. You know, it, like, renames, it renames things like that. Um, yeah, so that is what sparked my interest. It totally is owed to Rachel. And then from there, she also had me, um, she was in a little Zoom tarot group that would just meet on Sunday mornings and pull our cards and we would share what we got. And we still do that, uh, pretty much every Sunday. So that was really fun too. So that was what kind of sparked my interest. So the next question is, do you only use tarot in your readings or you de add in, well, did I read that right? Do you only use tarot in your readings or do you add in other forms of divination? Um, Oh, I do use, uh, I use a pendulum occasionally. Tarot and Oracle are my um, main forms of honestly doing anything. <laughs> it's the root of my like, spiritual work. I do daily readings for myself. This one is the fantastic menagerie that we're pulling out now. I love this devil card. I'm gonna have to do um, the My Favorite Majors tag again. I feel like in like a year from now and just see what's changed because um, I feel like a few of my newer decks could have some cards that I would add in like this fantastic menagerie oh, this deck is so good anyway I use a pendulum did I say that uh, occasionally um, and then I also you know what let me grab it <laughs> Because it's, I think it's in the same spot as I've just started to learn how to use witches' runes. Oh, maybe I don't have them. I thought I did. Where did I go with the witches' runes? That's a question of the day. Well, oh, you're there. Okay, okay, okay. So <laughs> I've got the supplies. This is a little pendulum board I got from Focus Busy Bee Coven. Look at the flower in there. She does resin art. So I have a pendulum board from her and she also made these witches runes that are made to look like they have um, like vintage wallpaper behind them. I think I've shown these before. Focus. We're using a new to me camera today. I typically have, oh there you can see the paper better. I typically have always filmed on my phone, but we're trying a camera today. <laughs> so bear with me a little bit as I figure that out. But yeah, I've really been liking witches' runes. I did try to learn regular runes for a little bit, and I actually made my own. 
Um, I, I did that when I actually, when Paul and I had COVID and we were quarantining, I found some rocks outside and uh, used a paint pen to draw runes <laughs> on the rocks myself. But honestly, I mean, that kind of fell to the wayside a little bit. I should bring these back out. These are kind of cool. I had a lot of fun making them too. It just was a silver paint pen. Um, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna bring these back out. These are fun. So I do like runes. And this is my pendulum. I have it in this little tin, like, I think it probably was a jewelry box, but I just took the inside out uh, to put my pendulum in. It's this smoky quartz one that kind of looks like a Oh my gosh. Yeah, it kind of looks like a crow skull. The woman who made it, who wire wrapped it, she, uh, oh my gosh, my hand is shaking. She owns a crystal store near here that I go to. Um, she said the reason she wrapped it into a pendulum is because it looked like a crow skull. And I was like, uh, sold. So that, I don't think I have any other pendulum. I think that's pretty much, why do I feel like I had, why do I feel like I do have another one? I don't think so. I think this is the one. I think I lost this for a little while. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking and like considered getting another one, but I didn't. And it showed up as it always does. So mostly tarot and oracle. That is like my main thing that I use to do everything I want to do. Look at this moon card. I love that so much. <laughs> um, but I do like to add in those elements sometimes for fun. Okay, number three. Are you a psychic or a card reader? Hmm. Am I a psychic or a card reader? I'm going to say... I don't know if I would use the term psychic. But honestly, I don't know much about that term, so maybe it just is more encompassing than I think it is. But I'm inclined to say both. I'm inclined to say both. Because I do think, um, I do know that I can read energies in a way. So if I'm doing a reading for someone else, I do kind I feel as though I am also um, tapping into their energy. If that makes any sense. I don't know if that does. I'm, I'm not sure how to explain it. Um, but also, and I, I do also think that getting intuitive hits is a thing. And I do think that does happen when I give readings. But... It's a little bit hard to say because I do think the really cool thing about tarot and the tarot system is that it, um, it really kind of encaptures or encapsulates, encaptures? That's a word, encapture. <laughs> it didn't sound like a word for a second. It really encapsulates. I guess you could say like the human psyche in a way and builds on very universal archetypes and situations. So while I do think that I know that I like 100% use my intuition and that I can read the energy, I do also feel like a lot of it comes from the fact that no matter what cards you pull, I think you are going to get something out of it because it's so rooted in human experience and things that we all can relate to that I kind of feel like I've never pulled cards for me or for someone else that were totally off base. Maybe um, sometimes the way I interpret them, it for myself is when this happens. Um, when I pull them for myself, I might misinterpret because I'm thinking too hard about it. 
um, or I just like don't kind of get it right away but usually if I walk away for a little bit and come back to it or I just go throughout my day I'm like oh that's what that was saying yeah that makes sense so that's how I kind of think about it I think yeah I'm gonna say both though because it's you know I do I don't want to like deny all the like intuitive kind of energy reading side to how I read the cards and I, I feel specifically that that comes out when I'm reading for other people. I consider myself a bit more of a card reader when I'm doing a reading for myself. Maybe more leaning into that psychic when it's for other people. And that being said, um, <laughs> I hate doing any sort of self-promo stuff. It just, I don't know, it doesn't feel natural, but I do offer readings if that interests anyone. I always have it linked down below. Uh, I have a couple different readings you can choose from and also just like a general I think three card reading or so. Um, I do have to say that it usually doesn't end up being. I, I'm bad at sticking to the three card thing because when I read I kind of, I guess this is also where like the energy and psychic thing comes off of is that like I'm gonna pull out whatever cards seem feel like they need to come out and I, I can't explain that other than it's just a feeling I get um, so three cards never seems to be the thing that happens side tangent um, but yes that is always linked down below if that interests anyone so the next question is do you use tarot for anything other than readings so spells altar cards displays art gifts um, I do use it in spell work. I tend to, did I get this dirty? I'm back. <laughs> I thought I got something, it, it looked like one of my, I'm go I have my northern animal right now and I thought it looked like I had got something on the cards. Like it looked like it was dirty and I almost panicked. <laughs> but I'm pretty positive it's just part of the card. I think it's just part of the card. Anyway, so do I use tarot for anything else? I do use it in spell work. Um, I really, like, like I was saying before, I use tarot for, like, anything, of course, reading-wise, but also anything, like, magical I want to do. So I, <clears throat> I use it for DD work now that I've just kind of gotten, gotten my toes into, <laughs> you could say. Um, I'll use, like, uh, I'll use a Lenormand to find lost things, you know how you can do that. So, yeah, I feel like I do use it for a couple different things. I'm not one to use altar cards. I pull cards, my fairy cards, every day, and I will leave those out until I pull cards again the next day. So I guess in a way it's kind of altar cards, but... I have like, I do keep out kind of if, um, I order a deck and the package comes with extra cards, um, I will, I leave those out. So I, I guess, mm, I don't know, like when I got the, uh, Fantastic Menagerie, it came with a moon card, so that's on my altar right now, so I guess kind of, in a way, but I won't pick apart any of my decks to like leave one card out again unless it's my my fairy cards that I pull every day so I think that answers that question have you ever taken a break from tarot no I've not um no <laughs> you know sometimes to me like I also though I don't force myself to do readings if I am not feeling equipped to do it. So if there is, you know, a day where I'm just like, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't. So I guess in a sense, maybe I've taken like a break for a day or something like that. But a uh, purposeful longer term break, no. No. 
you know, when I first started, it was pretty, like, I didn't read super, super frequently because I just was focused on learning, um, which honestly, in retrospect, if you are just learning to read tarot, I recommend, you know, learning a lot through doing readings. I think, at least for me, that probably <laughs> would have uh, been more helpful than just trying to, like, study. Um, do I have anything else to say about that? No, I think the answer is just, <laughs> just no. It's just, I, from the start, it's something that I just really got, got hooked. And I just, it's, I've built a, kind of a routine around it that I really love and it really structures and sets my day well. I really look forward to pulling my cards in the morning. That's like my solid thing I do. And now I pull my fairy cards. I really look forward to it. You know, I would absolutely take a break if that ever felt, if it felt like anything else, I, I would take a break because it's important to me that I'm getting joy out of it. But no, as of right now, I have not taken a break. That was a long way to say no. <laughs> if you could live in any tarot card from the RWS, which would it be? <gasps> oh, oh my gosh. Hello? You coming to visit? Stevie's here. <laughs> if I could live in any card from RWS specifically. That's, see, that's the tough one. Let's see. Actually, I have. Let's take out. Uh, do I have it here? Here we go. This is a clone, at least. Or, like, recolored. I think I know what I'm going to answer, but I just want to make sure. Although that's going to kind of take forever. I think if I could live in any card from the RWS, it would be either the sun card, just because everything looks so bright and happy and wonderful. Oh my gosh. Um, but also, I'm not sure because I get easily sunburned. <laughs> so that might not be a good situation, but also... I think maybe the Nine of Cups, because I, you know, obviously the Nine of Cups is a good card. Oh, wait, maybe... No, I'm going to continue on this thought. <laughs> you know, the Nine of Cups is a nice card to get. And also, it's just a guy sitting there with all of his wine, and that sounds like a good time. <laughs> I kind of want to hang out with that guy. But also maybe the Nine of Pentacles, because I do like gardens. But I'll stick with my original thought, because that was my gut reaction, was Nine of Cups wine. I want to hang out with him. <laughs> Um, do you use the tarot in a predictive way? Do you predict the future? No, I do. Mm. No? Wait, now I'm questioning. I want to say no, but also, I guess, in a sense, maybe yes, because when I pull my morning cards, my question is always, what do I need to know today? And those cards very much are kind of preparing me for how the day might play out. It doesn't exactly tell me what's going to happen, but maybe what to look out for. So I guess actually, in a sense, yeah, that, I, that would be predictive, I suppose. Uh, for the most part, no. It's more of a um, tool of reflection for me, but I do do those morning polls every day, and that's always my question. So I guess in a sense, yeah. But not, not like intensely where I'm like looking for anything specific. Ooh. I don't understand this question. Intuitive, rote, classic, modern, mix? What? I'm going to come back to that one. I'm going to watch the video again. We're going to come back to that one because I'm not understanding. But the next one is, what are your most consistent tarot habits? Oh, okay. So my daily polls are my most consistent thing. I pretty much do that every day. Um, I love it. It just sets the tone for my day right. I really look forward to it. And, you know, I've started where I've been picking my weekly decks and that revolves around my daily polls. So that is the most consistent. Secondly are my fairy pulls, so I will pull a card from my fairies oracle and then 
do a follow-up reading to that with my Hush Tarot. That's been the thing lately. I do that mostly daily, if not at least a few times a week, uh, which I've also been really enjoying and getting a lot out of, so that's been fun. Do you see tarot as a magical tool, a spiritual tool, a psychological slash self-help tool, something else, or all of the above? Oh, all of the above. All of the above. Like I was saying, I use it for everything. Um, I just find pulling something like I can hold in my hands, something physical and tangible, and helps to kind of guide my thoughts around things is very, very helpful for me. Especially since I am not one to, I have a very hard time meditating. I don't really try to, I don't enjoy it, honestly. Um, so doing things like that doesn't do much for me. Um, and doing any sort of magic without pulling cards doesn't feel like it sticks. Yeah, so I really use it for all of the above. It's, it really started as a psychological self-help tool for me, and it's, it's really done a lot for me in that way. Um, of course, you know, it should never replace professional help. I do feel like everyone can benefit from that as well. But, you know, that's really what it started out for, or started out as for me, and has continued to be a tool I use to kind of do a lot of self-work. It really helps to, to guide that and, and add structure to that for me. And what was the other one? magical, spiritual. Oh, and that's something I've recently been kind of dipping into. So the fairies poles are, I consider that to be spiritual work, but I've also been looking into deity work as well, which is very new for me, but it's something I've been really enjoying. Um, but I pretty much right now only, the, the way I do that is through pulling tarot and oracle. Do you collect tarot decks? Why or why not? Yes. I'm gonna say yes. Again, we had a whole- I had a whole conversation about this <laughs> with you all. <laughs> Where I'm working on not being ashamed to say yes to that question. And I do because they- they bring me a lot of joy. As you can tell, like, this is something that I do quite often is I just sit here and look through my cards. Um, so it brings me a lot of joy. I like having variety to read with. I like trying out new decks. I do think that getting to see different perspectives is really helpful for me and just really interesting and just, I don't know, keeps me interested and motivated. It's just something I enjoy and it feels a little bit almost like art collecting in a way. I just get a lot of enjoyment out of it and honestly even from the whole aspect of like, people trading decks, things like that. Like, I love that too, <laughs> you know? I just, I really like the whole thing around it. And I, you know, I also, I love using all of the decks I have. So, you know, I don't, I'm not a collector in the sense of that I have any decks that I don't want to use. If I don't feel like I want to use something, then it doesn't stay around. But I do have, you know, a larger amount of decks probably comparatively to others. So, I, you know, it, it is a collection and then I, I enjoy it a lot. Okay, so I just went back and watched the video to, <laughs> to understand um, the question that I wasn't getting. This is going to be a little bit all over the place, this video, I feel. <laughs> But, so the question that says intuitive wrote classic modern mix is asking, like, what is your style of reading? So are you an intuitive reader? Do you, like, do things by the textbook? Um, take things in your own way. So my answer to that, would I would say, is um, I definitely tend to be more of an intuitive reader. I don't know that I really, I lean into any other sort of style, except maybe when I'm reading for myself, I have a tendency to be more by the book. Um, but mostly intuitive. So that's the answer to that one. So next we have, do you have an aesthetic when it comes to types of decks you enjoy? And I feel like I do, but also I feel like I do and I don't. I feel like my, 
the decks that I have are a little bit all over the place, but also also not. I uh, the bins that I have, I'm very much able to split into my nature animal decks and just the dawn go all in another bucket. <laughs> so I would say mostly my aesthetic tends to be very, you know, woodsy, green, animal based. Hello. Um. Cute. <laughs> That's definite a definite thing to consider. Yeah, but then also, you know, also I've just got the randoms that I really enjoy that make no sense to that. Like, oh, I've been loving the Crimson Asteria, and that doesn't make sense to the decks. Even like the little, well, I'm gonna say it's a mix of cute and very like green earthy decks is what I tend to lean towards. Oh, we're up to the bonus question. Okay, last one. Do you personify your decks? Yeah. <laughs> Of course I do! I don't sit here and kind of, you know, consistently think like, oh, well, this deck, uh, like, reminds me of this kind of person. Do I do that? Yes, for sure. But, you know, it's not like a consistent thing. But I personify my decks in a way where, I mean, when I'm reading with them, they do all feel like they have their own personalities. Like, with, when it comes to the artwork, um... I just lost all my words. The way the guidebook is written, you know, if there's a guidebook, I just feel like they all have their own personalities and give me messages in a different kind of way. And I think that's due to, you know, the creators and the writers. It's almost like a, <laughs> when I think of it, I feel like it's like their own Frankenstein creations where it's like they brought this thing to life. So of course it's going to have a certain feel and personality to it. So I say yes. I definitely personify. But that was the last question. I apologize if this was totally all over the place. I'm hoping I was in focus the whole time. But thank you all so much for hanging out with me and I hope you all have a wonderful end to your week.